So hello everyone. Um, my name is Michael. I work for Wikimedia Deutschland, which is the uh, Wikimedia chapter in Germany. And I'm here to talk to you about Wikipedia to the Moon, which is my favorite um, project at the moment. Um, and here's the plan how to do this. First off, I would like to introduce you to Wikipedia to the Moon. Then I will show you a timeline of recent events and events that will be upcoming in the next weeks and months. And then there was a community voting, I will tell you all about it in a couple of minutes, that ended yesterday. So there's a result and you are the first people who will hear the result of the community voting. Um, then I will be talking about next steps and how maybe you can get involved if you would like to uh, make an edit that goes to space, literally. Um, but first off, um, at the first talk today, Andy was asking, how many people are here in the room who would consider themselves to be new to Wikipedia, who maybe don't know much about Wikipedia. Could you please raise your hand? That would help me with my presentation. Okay, a couple of people, but many other people um, are not new. Okay, thanks. And I have a second question. Um, how many of you in the room have heard about Wikipedia to the moon and know what Wikipedia to the moon is? Please raise your hand. Okay, a couple of familiar faces, I'm not surprised, but most of you don't know, um, which is great, so I can explain it to you. Um, so first of all, what is Wikipedia to the moon? The most important thing is that it's a birthday present. It's a birthday present for you, for me, for everybody who's involved with Wikipedia. Because the, this year, 2016, is the year called Wikipedia 15. So it's the anniversary year. Wikipedia was founded in 2001. And in January this year, we celebrated um, the birthday of the English Wikipedia, and two months later, we in Germany, we celebrated the birthday of the German Wikipedia, and there's birthdays all over the year. So, Wikipedia to the Moon is a birthday present to Wikipedia. And this right here, this little machine, it's not the present, um, but it actually will carry the birthday present. Um, what this is, it's a so-called moon rover. You know, there are many kinds of rovers. The most famous one I know um, is the rover that is up on planet Mars right now called Curiosity. Um, it drives around there, takes images, makes scientific experiments. Uh, it even has a Twitter handle and uh, uh, Twitters. So the moon rover that you see here um, is very much like that uh, rover up on planet Mars. So you see, it has, I call it the head. The eyes that it has there, those are different cameras that have different functions and uh, do analytic stuff. Uh, this ro rover will also carry um, different scientific experiments. And on the, on the back, as I call it, that's the second picture, you see solar panels. So this is um, so that the robot, that the rover um, has energy up there in space. Um, the main difference between the Mars rover that's already up there on Mars and this one here is that this vehicle is being built by volunteers by a group of 10 to 12 people who are from Berlin. It's not being built by a space agency. It's not being built by a country um, or by the military, but by a group of people like you and me. Um, none of them, they are from Berlin and they are called part-time scientists, part-time as in working part-time. Um, none of them is a rocket scientist. I mean, in a liter literal sense. Uh, and just a few of them um, have an engineering background. Um, and still, eight years ago, they started to build this moon rover. And that's because they wanted to be part of a competition. It's a competition called um, Lunar X Challenge. It was initiated by Google many years ago. One more question. Has anybody of you heard about the Google X Challenge? OK, a handful of people. For the others? Um, it's a competition that's older than Wikipedia, actually, I think. Um, and its main goal is to challenge people to manage a private mission to the moon. And there are other goals that say, OK, the mission will be accomplished when you get a vehicle to the moon, land it safely on the surface of the moon, where it has to drive 500 meters, and send back images to Earth. That's the challenge. Uh, and it has been around for many, many years. And no team uh, all over the world uh, has yet managed to uh, succeed at this challenge. There were like 20 or 30 different teams that tried. Uh, and as of today, 
there are only five teams left from all over the world um, who really stand a chance to achieve that goal and who are very far in their preparations so and who can actually go to, moon to the moon uh, next year. And one of them is the group of people from Berlin, and that's the city where I come from and where the uh, main office of Wikimedia Deutschland is. And so they approached us and talked to us about Wikipedia. And they did that because of the golden thing that you see in the right-hand corner. Another question. Does anybody know what it is? A little riddle? John, I know you know what it is. You don't count. Thanks anyway. Okay. This up there, the golden thing is called the golden record. Um, it was sent to outer space in 1977, so almost 40 years ago. It was part of the Voyager mission. Uh, and it's a very famous... Uh, space artifact. It's a symbol about humanity. Um, and on that golden record are greetings to whoever in 55 different languages. There are some images of Earth on it and even some music. Um, and the part-time scientists, while building their rover, and they're building it uh, uh, right now, they will carry scientific experiments with them, but, th but they thought that golden record was so cool. They would like to have their own kind of golden record. And how they want to do it is, that's the discs down there in the lower uh, corner uh, that look like DVDs. And actually, they, they work like DVDs. You can put them in your DVD player, but they are not made of plastic. They are made of ceramics so that they don't break in space. So this is the medium that the part-time scientists, this group of volunteers from Berlin, will build into that rover. And I thought, OK, one of these discs holds 20 gigabytes of data storage. And I thought, what should we put on it? And the first thing that came to their minds was Wikipedia, because they have been using Wikipedia all their lives, and they love it very much. Um, the problem is that 20 gigabytes is not much of uh, data space. Uh, the English Wikipedia alone is, if you include images and stuff, uh, is several um, terabytes large. So um, they asked the people at Wikimedia Deutschland, and they uh, uh, asked us, to take care of this. And we, th uh, we said, OK, we can take Wikipedia to the moon. This is great. Um, let's ask the global community about it. And that's what we did. And that's Wikipedia to the moon. Here's a little overview um, of what we did and what we will be doing in the rest of the year. So we thought, see there, in March 2016, we kind of received the gift, the birthday present. And we thought, let's make a project that has four different phases. Let's discuss ideas. Let's vote on ideas. Let's work on articles once we know how we want to do it. And then let's celebrate at um, the 5th of December. 5th of December is a very special date. It's a United Nations um, special day called International Volunteers Day. And it's there uh, to celebrate the efforts of volunteers. And we thought that would be a great date to kind of have a selection of Wikipedia articles that the community has decided upon. Uh, put it on that disk and hand it over to the part-time scientists so that they can go to the moon at the end of 2017. So what we did in spring, this is phase one discussion, we created a page uh, on MetaWiki. For those of you who don't know MetaWiki, it's kind of like Wikipedia, but you don't write, wik you don't write articles there. Um, it's a platform for people to talk about Wikipedia. And we set up a page there and said, Dear communities all over the world, language communities, do you have any ideas on how to select content? And then people started discussing. They selected ideas. They said, this is a good idea. This is a bad idea. Or let's not do this. And they discussed for six weeks. And after that, in the past two weeks, we had a community vote. And I will come to that in a minute. Uh, and now we have a decision on uh, how to collect the content for this Wikipedia to the Moon mission so that we can start working starting next Friday. Uh, from July through October. So, about this voting. Um, this is a PDF presentation that I have here. I could also go online, but this will do if I just show you things right here. So, after these six weeks of discussion that I was talking about, um, there are 17 different scenarios. And scenarios means that people said, hmm, maybe we could... Uh, uh, do this and that. Maybe we could have a top 30 list of, uh, of articles. And then they said, this is my scenario. And then there were more than 17 scenarios, but the community talked about it, and some were, uh, some were deleted. Out of these 17 different scenarios, we created 10 things that you could vote on in the last two weeks. Um, and the voting lasted for 
14 days, it ended yesterday, and there were 152 unique voters. I'm saying unique voters because you could cast your vote for different scenarios. Uh, and to all of you, maybe there's somebody in the room who voted. Uh, thank you very much, because now we have a result. You can find it here, but don't worry, don't go there. I will show it uh, um, with screenshots. So this is the winning scenario in the middle of the page. It's called, let's work on all featured articles and lists on all Wikipedia. So the basic idea is here, uh, let's send up the best of the best. Um, there was one of, the, uh, uh, one of the scenarios. You see here the first few votes that are down there, and I will show you another screenshot. The last one is number 93, and that's the important number. So 93 people cast their vote for this um, scenario, and so that's our winner. That's how we will select content starting next Friday uh, to put it on this disk. So, next steps. That's the most important question to me. Okay, all the best articles and the lists, but what does it mean? And it's not a, it's not a simple question. Uh, let me show you with an example. This is a screenshot from the English Wikipedia that I took yesterday. This page explains what featured content and featured articles and lists are featured content, what it really is. Uh, and it says here, I quote, Featured content represents the best of Wikipedia, including articles, pictures, and other contributions that showcase excellent results of the collaborative efforts of Wikipedia. And the red thing that I scribbled there, it shows the different kinds of featured content that English Wikipedia has. Now, what's very interesting, I'm familiar with the German Wikipedia, and we have featured content as well. But there are different classifications. And people have told me in the last weeks that there are many language versions and you maybe told us this morning that there are 291 different versions, there are many language uh, communities who don't have featured content. They don't have this feature. So we can't just start next Friday and put featured content together. People will need to talk. Uh, and me, and that's, uh, to be frank, I have no idea how that will work. So it will be up to the different language communities to um, deal with this question. Yes, that's phase three, so working from July through October. That's a very long time. So that's four months for, uh, in which you can edit, in which you can ask questions and discuss. But you can also do many more things, even, you, uh, uh, even we all in the room here, regardless of whether you're a Wikimedia chapter or a user group, a volunteer, whether you're staff, whether you're new to Wikipedia, or whether you're an old-time Wikipedian. There are many things you can do. For instance, we at Wikimedia Deutschland, just to give you a quick example, um, we, will, we will have a press release to celebrate Wikipedia 15 uh, and to celebrate this project and to talk about this project. Um, in the upcoming months, we will highlight different aspects um, of Wikipedia to the moon. Maybe we will try to make a document documentary and attend many wiki events. I'm not going into detail. If you're interested in these kind of questions, just ask me afterwards. The point is, uh, I would like to invite all of you um, to be part of the project. And the question is not how to do it, but why would you do that? Uh, that's some feedback that I got over the past few weeks and months. People told me, yeah, this sounds nice, it's a great idea, but why are you doing this? What's the point? Are we not wasting resources to go to the moon? No, we're not. We're not paying anything, it's a gift, uh, but the question remains, what's so important about it? Could it be fun? Why? Um, and I have many answers to that, but I would like to answer with something that happened yesterday. Um, I apologize for the poor quality of the photograph. I will read out w uh, what's on it, but it is, it is from yesterday's opening session and from Jimmy Wales' introduction. Um, and this is the part, if you were there, where he was talking about what's going on in the world right now with many thoughts and feelings of anger, of hate, of bad rhetoric. And he said, this is not Wikipedia. And I think he's right. So what he says here, I'm trying to read it out. Um, he said, Wikipedia is about building bridges, not walls. And I think he's right. Wikipedia as a force for knowledge, and knowledge is a force for peace and understanding. That's right as well, I think. This year's program focuses on Wikipedia as a driver for change, celebrating and investigating the impact Wikipedia has on the world. I can think of no better sign of our impact than people. And that last sentence is the reason why I put up this, uh, this photograph here, because I think that's a great sentence. Um, it's always about people. And I have two groups of people in mind. Um, 
for who this project might be interesting. The first group is Wikipedians. So people like you who are very familiar with Wikipedia, new people, people like me. Um, I think what we normally do in our language communities is we write in our language communities. There are a couple of people who are very talented, who write in two languages or three or four and have many contributions. But most people write in their Wikipedias. For instance, Italian Wikipedia, German Wikipedia, Hebrew, Wik Hebrew Wikipedia, or whatever. With Wikipedia to the Moon, we can actually work together across language versions to have one program together. And I think that might be really, really a fun thing to do. And you can really edit and do something together. And the other group, is the people who are not involved with Wikipedia, so often labeled as the general public. Uh, I know from experience that there are still so many people out there uh, who have not a clue that Wikipedia is written by, by people like you, by, by everyone, that um, it's a volunteer-driven project. I also know that many people in the past 15 years have learned, yes, okay, volunteers are writing Wikipedia and it's not a for-profit company, but still, most of them do not know how to edit Wikipedia. Um, and they don't know basic facts. For instance, uh, Andy Mabbitt this morning um, gave us um, basic facts about it. Um, and I think something like a moon mission, those volunteers who are building that moon rover and who came to us, um, they are doing something really great and something that the public would be interested in. Um, and so by being part of this project and having Wikipedia to the moon, which people will, um, will later see when, when we have this moon mission, we can educate people about Wikipedia and educate them about that Wikipedia is not hard to do. You can edit, anybody can, uh, can, can contribute. So I think this is something good, something that might be fun for two groups, for the people who are here, for Wikipedians, and for the general public. Okay. And there's a one last anecdote before I come to this. Um, yesterday there was this lady here on stage uh, I think her name was Catherine. I'm not talking about the new ED, but the person from Isinolario. And, si and she said, the idea to have a Wikimania here at Isinolario was foolish and bold. I think that was the, uh, the, the wording that she had. And she also said, uh, they did it um, because the mayor here, and that's what she said, he's also foolish and bold. And I think that's a great wording and something that's true for Wikipedians and for people who tried it as volunteers to go to the moon. It's, it's you need to be foolish and be bold. And even if you're not certain, just do things. And that's, I think that's the greatness of Wikipedia. Um, and in that spirit, I think it needs people who just try to do things and move forward. I mean, 15 years ago, coming back to the birthday, nobody would have thought that an open encyclopedia could be the number one source of knowledge in the world, but it is. And 20 years ago, nobody thought that private space travel would be possible, but it is. Uh, and so I think just take a next step and do something bold like Wikipedia to the moon. So that's why I'm asking you to kind of, when you go back home to your language communities uh, and you think that sounds interesting, that, and, and, um, that project, please be a part of it. Please add it, please tell other people in your community about it who don't know about Wikipedia to the moon. Um, so that's kind of the thing that I would uh, ask you today. If you have any questions, this is the last slide, and then we can come to, um, to your questions. Please check out moon.wikimedia.org. That's the only contact information you need to remember today if you're interested. Uh, it's a page on Meta. It, it, it explains everything about the project. You have contact information there. It would show you ways to, uh, to engage. Also, there's those, those four faces. Um, we know everything about the project, so we're here at Wikimania, you can talk to us, you can talk to me right after the talk. Whenever you see me walk around the Sinolario, talk to me. Uh, I'm, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad to talk to you about the project. There's also Jan, who, who's, who's here in the second row. Uh, he's doing press work at Wikimedia Deutschland, so if you're interested in coordinating uh, stories, um, please talk to Jan. Um, there's also Cornelius, whose job at Wikimedia Deutschland, there he's waving, uh, is to make the Wikimedia conference better to uh, coordinate program and uh, engage people, but he knows everything uh, about Wikipedia to the moon and he's a long time Wikipedian, you can ask him. And there's Martin, he's not here in this room, he's a long time German Wikipedia and he knows everything about volunteer support. Um, so ask him about that and he also knows everything about um, Wikipedia to the moon. So we are here at Wikimania all day and tomorrow and I have a gift for you before we come to the question. This is a button that we made, a Wikipedia to the moon button. I will put it on my shirt in a minute and I brought like enough for everybody in the room and I will just spread them out right here after the questions. Come and grab some and then uh, uh, talk to me. Thank you very much.
So do we have time for questions? Okay. Any questions? Uh, thanks for your explanations. And uh, as far as I know, this scenario is probably the, the largest one of the, the ones that you mentioned, isn't it? You mean, in, um, so the question is, is the scenario that one the largest one? The largest you mean uh, in, in terms of, of content and yes. then... Uh, and then uh, of the quantity of the content. Quantity and... Uh, yeah. Um, that, that's my personal opinion. It looks bigger than some other scenarios. For instance, the second placed one uh, was the suggestion to just pick one article, the article about the moon, and uh, send it up there in 300 different languages. That would have been yeah. a, a very tiny quantity. Um, yes, could be one of the larger ones. I don't have numbers, and it depends uh, on how the featured content system works in a different Wikipedias. We will see. So 20 gigabytes is not much data, data for uh, um, storage space for all the Wikipedias, but we will see how far that reaches and maybe we will need to talk about that in a month or two or three and see um, if that's enough space or if we need to um, have some additional editing. Uh, I'm curious, for, for how long this ceramic disk uh, with information will survive uh, on, on the um, surface of the Lune, because, uh, Ilya, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, uh, because there is radiation there. How, how long will this disk will survive on the, yep. on the moon? So the question is, this, this disk that's made of ceramics, how long will it survive on the surface of the moon? Um, the interesting thing is, according to, uh, uh, to the manufacturer, uh, the disk that they are picking, that it's called an M disk, and M is for millennium, and they call it a millennium disk because they say, there's a guarantee that it will work for 1,000 years, which is kind of funny because uh, we, can <laughs> um, we, we, we can just believe it. Um, so it will hold a long time. It will not hold millions of years. So there's radiation on the moon um, uh, and all kinds of different, different factors. The reason why the people picked this format was that it is in fact space tested. And in contrast, for instance, to a DVD, which is composed of different plastic layers, they come apart in space, and this one doesn't. So it's supposed to last at least a thousand years. Hi, I'm Jorge. I got here late, so apologies if you already said this, but uh, I'm curious to know about the language selection. Um, what would be the process to select? Because I understand that there's like limited capacity for this, so. Um, Will it be like on um, the size of the languages or trying to be like representative among like, the different parts of the world or is this something that's just part of like the process or the thinking process to come ahead? Yeah, thanks. That's a great question. So the question is, um, what is the process behind selecting the languages that will be, will, will be part of the project? Um, in the very first meeting with the part-time scientists, whose, it's their mission, uh, we sat together and said, okay, what comes to mind? And the thing we agreed on immediately was, uh, let's have as many languages as possible there because it's kind of, if we do this project together as a global community, uh, we should strive to include all the languages we have at, uh, at, at Wikipedia. Um, and the question is, is great and so far as it points to the role of myself and the other people there, we're just the facilitators of the process. For instance, I haven't even voted. Uh, I'm just there to answer questions uh, and then it's up to the community to decide. Uh, that means in the upcoming days, uh, so that we can start on uh, next Friday, we will invite all the language communities um, to be part of this. And then hopefully many language communities will, will say, okay, I will do that be because two people or 10 or 100 people uh, will engage and say, okay, I'll take the German Wikipedia uh, and contribute to the project. If there are language communities where nobody stands up and says, this is a cool project, it won't happen. So it's an open process uh, and we'll see. So okay, if there are no more questions, Lorraine has stopped. There are hundreds of buttons down here. Uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>